Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Oh baby, I don't care what anybody says. I truly think that I've been on to something. These are the same concepts that I've been talking about for 12 months. It turns out we've been a little bit ahead of the trend here. The media's lagging behind. The leftist media is realizing their worst nightmare. I guess reality is setting in. All the theorizing, it's all coming to fruition. There is a Trump rise, obviously happening. And it's now become so obvious that the leftoids at MSDNC, well, they're essentially sh bricks as reality checks in. Let me show you guys exactly what I mean by that. Then, of course, let's have a conversation about the ideas because that's what we've been talking about over the last year or so. We've got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so obviously the panic is setting in at MSDNC. I mean, to simplify this, but, you know, Donald Trump's rhetoric even and even his sort of swagger looks more like 2016 in the campaign you covered so closely katie um then he looks in 2020 and and in fact i was just discussing this with somebody we all know on this call or uh, on this um uh, on this program I, i'm gonna leave his name out of it because he didn't know i was going to quote him just now but he even noted we, we were talking about this idea that when trump's losing the worst version of Trump shows up. And when Trump's winning or he thinks he's ahead, he's actually a different person, a different candidate. I mean, just I think Vaughn could probably speak to this now. The Donald Trump in Detroit um, and, and those events he did, he was oddly loose. He was trying to be funny and and all of this where from about 2017 to 2022, we had and even 2023 through the primaries, it's been nothing but angry grievance Trump. Right. Angry, angry, angry. It's interesting if, if he somehow lo drops the grievance, uh, but he could end up looking more like that 2016 candidate Maybe. where he's the outside disruptor. But it's hard to imagine. Donald Trump seems to have his swagger back. Trump's swagger looks more like 2016 than 2020. That's exactly what I've been saying. I've been saying that for a long time, that this election seems to be shaping out a whole lot more like the 2016 election than the 2020. Except it doesn't end there, because it's even worse than that, at least if you're a Democrat or part of that interest group. You know, back heading into the 2016 election, you saw frustration. American voters who are mostly tired and disappointed with Barack Obama. They didn't feel he delivered the change that he had promised. There was obviously a desire for something new, a new direction for the country, and so voters had two options. Stick with Hillary Clinton, a status quo politician who happens to be extremely unlikable and unpopular, or go with the wild card. The American people chose a wild card. Now it's the exact same thing. Except the option isn't unpopular Hillary Clinton, it's brain melt Joe, or go with the wild card that is Donald Trump. Except here's where things get more difficult for Democrats, here's where it's even worse. It's no longer just wild card Donald Trump, it's established, well-liked, highly supported, great track record Donald Trump. Donald Trump is no longer an unknown commodity. I keep saying that, the Democrats seem stuck in their 2016 ways. They're using the same scaremongering tactics, but those tactics don't work because Trump was already president for four years. The funniest example, the one I always mention, is all this fear-mongering related to the idea that Donald Trump won't ever leave office. He'll refuse to leave, he'll bunker himself in the Oval Office. But all you gotta do is think back to 2020. Oh wait, he literally left, even in a scenario where he was totally convinced that what had transpired was a failure of democracy. Even in one of the most extreme scenarios, at least from his purview, he left. These Democrat talking points no longer carry weight. And that's truly where things get dangerous for Democrats. Here's another concept that we've been talking about, frankly, for longer than 12 months, but whatever, let's just say for the last year or so. And this, I think, is what Chuck Todd meant when he was referencing Trump's swagger. I've called it the normalization of Trump in mainstream culture. This whole American billionaire bad boy arc that's currently happening in California, yeah, this is the Democrat Party's worst nightmare. All of a sudden, Trump is just a regular bro, just popping up on the Zoom call and chatting it up with some of the most influential, trailblazing entrepreneurs and thinkers of our generation. Here we go. Ooh. Hello, everybody. Hello, Mr. President. Hey, Tim, I love that house he has. I love David's house. <laughs> what a house. That made the biggest impression, huh? That Thank you, great. sir. I heard you have a pretty nice house, too. Yeah, I have. A, we're in a nice house. We like well, it's only worth 18 million, right? Isn't like, I know. Said? The judge said 18 million people <laughs> said Palm Beach has gone down a long way. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Let your winners ride. Rain Man David Sass. We open source it to the fans, and they've just gone crazy with it. Love you, West. Queen of Kinwa. 
Thanks so much for sitting down with us, Mr. President. The All In Pod is basically the, the four of us having conversations. It's kind of a spectrum of different views. We got it's sort of like a little bit of some Fox News and then some MSDNC at the same time. Well, so. that's okay. <laughs> Keeps it interesting. Yeah. I mean, just fantastic optics. Just the intro to their whole podcast puts Donald Trump in a completely different light. And frankly, I'm going to say it, and I'm not just being a Trump shill. The man is shining. I think even if you're the biggest Trump hater, you cannot deny the fact that Trump is glowing right now. He's having a honeymoon period. The charges had no effect. He dusted off his shoulders, stood back up, and it's been a campaign honeymoon period ever since. Again, the expected effect from the Democrats was that a guilty verdict would destroy Donald Trump. His candidacy would simply cease to exist. But instead, he's pulling over historically Democrat donating big tech Silicon Valley billionaires and not only collectively donating him over $14 million since the Winklevoss twins jumped in, but also essentially kind of going on the campaign trail for the Trump campaign seemingly pro bono on podcasts and news shows. Here's another tech billionaire, Palmer Lucky, going out there and publicly defending the former president. Donald Trump was right on NATO. OK, when everyone was shitting on Trump for having outdated views of NATO, like, do you remember what he did? He went to Europe and he said way before the war in Ukraine, he said, Germany, you are totally dependent on Russia. You are not spending enough on your military. You are not meeting your 2 percent. NATO and Met allies are supposed to send 10, 2 percent of their GDP on military production to help NATO. Mm. He said, you're not meeting your commitment. You're not meeting the 2%. You're giving billions of dollars, literally billions of dollars a month to Russia for their oil and gas. You're completely dependent on them. He said to other EU nations, he said, you're all delinquent. You're all saying that NATO is important and you give Russia billions of dollars mm. and then you don't even build enough weapons to deter them. And that was a hundred. And what, the, what did they do? They laughed. Literally, there's video of, of the German chancellor and, and, and the French, the French ambassador literally laughing at each other at the idea that Germany was, he says, it's true. You're completely dependent on Russia. You cannot deny that Donald Trump has a swagger that he's never had before. There's a level of public acceptance that has never been there before. A level of popularity that's bursting through the stadium roof. He's pulling in historic money in terms of fundraising numbers. He's now aligned the GOP behind him. Something is happening. It's exactly what we've been saying all of the factors seem to be coming into effect here. We've been talking about Donald Trump going on podcasts and having more sit-down interviews and conversations, him creating almost a parasocial relationship with the audience, humanizing himself, relating with the audience. We've been talking about how that alone can completely dismantle the leftist narrative about him being a threat to democracy in our freaking existence. Well, that seems to be exactly what's happening. He's building a swagger. They can see it. He's shooting up in the polls. We've been talking about this election mirroring 2016, and we we might have been onto something, except it might be even better. Something is brewing. And I'm just hoping every single day that I'm onto something here. Anyways, that's pretty much what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.